Hey everyone, Jamo here. One of my favourite things about Splatoon is all the weapons you can choose in the game. Each one looks so cool and unique. But this makes me wonder, what are they based on? That's why I decided to do a little research and bring you the weapon origins for all of the weapons in Splatoon 3. From the obvious to the not so obvious, in this video I'm going to go over the inspiration for the weapons in the Shooter class, Dually class and Stringers class. I chose these because they are the flagship weapons from each of the three Splatoon games. It only made sense for me to do them together. And with all of that preamble out of the way, let's jump straight into the shooters. And where else better to start with than with the traditional splatter shot? This weapon is quite clearly based on the traditional water gun toys from the 90s, but specifically Super Soakers, even down to the colours. Meanwhile, the splatter shot Pro bears a resemblance to crayons with some of its layout. However, it draws its main inspiration from the Super Soaker CPS. And while the Pro looks like an elite water gun, the Junior on the other hand looks like a cheap plastic water gun. Even down to the clear plastic you can clearly see it's made from. And with the colours it dons when it has a different ink inside of it. The Aerospray resembles an airbrush used for applying colours to surfaces rather than spraying water. So an even better fit for Splatoon. The Aero part of the name is a nod to Aerosol Spray Pens, another name for the airbrush. The Splashomatic appears to be based on a marker pen. This is clear when looking at the bit in the middle and the part where the ink comes out. However, some have drawn parallels to the guns that tattoo artists use. The same can be said about the Splushomatic, however with a funnel at the end, making it appear a lot more like a bold marker pen. The 52 and 96 GAL weapons are both designed after Millicor MGL grenade launchers. However, the cylinder is replaced with a water cooler jug. And the 96 has a salt and pepper tube on the end, for some reason. Probably the simplest to guess, but both the H3 and L3 nozzle noses are your typical garden hose with a nozzle attached. It's even wrapped around a hose reel to keep it in place. Going from the obvious to the obscure, the Jet Squelcher seems to be the least apparent what the inspiration is. However, some have drawn parallels to it and glue guns. Not anything important, but something I feel is worth mentioning here is that the weapon does look a lot like the weapon Star-Lord from the Marvel Comics and Guardians of the Galaxy uses, but it's unlikely that that was the basis. The Squeezer is a funny looking weapon based on a champagne bottle I love the attention to detail on this, with the nozzle being the neck of the bottle and the ink firing out the cork. And the handle looks like a bottle opener. Very well done. We cannot talk about weapon origins without covering the NZAP. This is quite literally identical to the Zapper gun accessory from the original Nintendo Entertainment System. The American version to be precise. The one difference being the visible text now reading in the Inkling language. This is so cool and such a deep cut reference. And lastly for the shooters, we have the Hero Shot replica. This one appears to be a cross between two different firearms, those being the Magpul FDC-9 and the kel KSG. Of course, made kid friendly for the world of Splatoon. But enough about shooters, let's move on to the duelies. And what else to start with than the good old Splat duelies. These are based on spray bottles specifically, and fun fact, they are the only splat branded weapons not to don the Splatoon 3 blue and yellow weapon colours, instead retaining Splatoon 2's pink and green. Perhaps a nod to those games, since that was the first game Duelies appeared in. Dapple Duelies are inspired by different things. The name is inspired by the Dapple style of painting, where wool is placed on a roller to create this sort of dapple effect. This might be because the weapon itself is based on dentist equipment, most notably with the two toothbrushes on the end of the handles. Beluga duelies are quite simply based on hot glue guns. Even the name gives that away, with Gluga sounding like glue gun. This brings me back to the dually squelches. As stated before, these bear resemblance to Star-Lord's weapon of choice, even more so now that there's two of them and they're red, but in terms of actual inspiration, they seem to be a lot more akin to power drills. 
The elongated nozzle really gives it that feel to me. The hardest weapon for me to pin down is definitely the Dark Tetra Dualies. They seem so unique, yet have a familiar feel to them. However, they are indeed based on something, and that something is Deranger Pistols combined with, get this, sports shoes of all things. Crazy, I know. But after a lot of research, that's the only conclusion me and a few of my friends who helped me with this video could come up with. And the logic makes sense. It always comes in twos, pairs of doolies and pairs of shoes. Now, onto the new kids on the block. Stringers are these bow and arrow like weapons, but did you know specifically where they draw inspiration from? Well let me tell you. Take the tri-stringer for example. While it looks like a bow and arrow, it resembles a ballista, an ancient missile launching weapon by the Greeks. The tri-stringer also appears to be fashioned from an old fishing rod, showing how crafty the inkling weapons have become. The reflux on the other hand looks to be the same, but on a more commercial wide scale. It also seems to function a lot more like a crossbow, rather than a simple bow and arrow. Sleek and sturdy, it appears to have wheels on it akin to those on hospital equipment, and an easy pull mechanism. And there you have it, these are but a few of the weapon origins for weapons in Splatoon 3. Now you know your origins for shooters, stringers and dualies. Stick around for next time, where I'll cover another few categories of weapons in Splatoon 3. Be sure to like this video, share it, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next part. And until then, I will catch you in the next one.